Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my 2020 sort of bullet journal migration slash planning video. I say sort of because I still have not solved the problem of my editing software refusing to allow me to rotate the desktop view so that it's upside up. The options it gives me are sideways this way, sideways this way, and upside down. But even though there's a way to flip it 180 degrees, it says it does it and then it doesn't. One of my goals for 2020 is going to be to learn a new video editing program and see if that will help not only that issue, but some other issues that I've had going on with video editing. But that's a different video. For right now, I am going to focus on migrating from my second half of 2019 bullet journal to my new, hopefully, first half of 2020 journal. I've been bullet journaling since August of 2017 when I started in this nice, simple spiral band notebook, which worked really well as a starter notebook. I did ultimately decide I wanted dot grid pages so that it, I would have the dots for guidelines without lines necessarily getting in my way if I didn't want to pay attention to them. And then I discovered the Dingbats notebooks. I've been through a couple of their animal, their wildlife series, and all of their Earth series at this point. And I've really enjoyed the Earth series, but there's only three of them, so I'm back to the wildlife series for my next bullet journal. This is going to be my new bullet journal, definitely for the start of 2020 and hopefully for the first half of 2020. There's no way I have never yet managed to make a bullet journal last an entire year. Half a year, I am good with. As long as I can keep full semesters together, in fact, I'm good with that. So if this only lasts the spring of 2020, I will not cry too much. I'll cry a little, because there's a reason I picked this specific one for 2020. And it's this. I'm leading another study abroad program this coming summer, late May, early June. So technically it's late spring, but yeah, it's summer session. And we are going to Australia. So kangaroo seemed like the way to go. Because there'll be a lot of planning for that going on during the spring semester. And hopefully I will be able to keep this going through the actual trip and courses, because the courses continue going after we get back. And um, yeah, I, I hope to be able to get keep, contain all of that in here. So this is the book for 2020s beginning, whatever that ends up meaning. Since I am not currently succeeding with the desktop view. Um, what I've got are some stills, which I will just continue to speak over as they come up. And I'm going to talk through what I have set up so far for 2020. First off, we've got a theme word for the year, which is new for me, and the start of the index. The word I've chosen for 2020's theme is alignment. Credit goes to Brianna Buckmaster of the Wayward Podcast for this because it's a term she has used on a number of occasions and that I have adopted and found really useful in thinking about when things are working and when they are not. There have been many times throughout 2019 when I have been thinking 
this isn't working or it's making me very unhappy because this thing that I'm doing is not in alignment with my path, with my life, with who I understand myself to be. So that's one of my goals for 2020 is to make sure that I'm making choices that ideally are in alignment with what I understand my life path to be. And on the occasions when that's not entirely possible or not possible yet, that they at least support moving towards that alignment. So that is my theme word for the year. On the opposite side, I've started my index, which doesn't have a whole lot yet because I haven't put a whole lot in here yet. Mostly it's the front matter, actually entirely it's the front matter of the bullet journal. Um, the tab key, I've added a vision board this year um, instead of the values sketches that I had been doing in the past, and that's facing the page of my affirmations. I've continued using a quotes and inspiration spread and I decided to thread that in the index, meaning what you see in parentheses there is where that collection exists across different journals. Um, and I will link somewhere to the a video that Ryder Carroll has on threading as a way of connecting collections across journals. And then there's the actual pages that it is in so far in this journal. Uh, books I want to read, books I've read, that's also something that I like to keep threaded. Um, not everything that is repeated across journals gets threaded. Like books I want to read, I don't thread that because I migrate that. Anything that's still on that list that I haven't read, that I still feel that I want to read someday, gets migrated. Things that I have read moved over to the red list and things that I've decided, you know what, this has been sitting here on this list for a while. It's just not going to happen. Those drop off. So there's no point in threading it. Then the next few gift ideas, media recs, future log, and project progress are the remaining ones in here. There's not a whole lot to say about the tab key. Um, the Earth series of the Dingbats journals actually have a page dedicated for this and have little semicircles to make it easier to highlight those little spots along the page so that you can find those specific things, but that's just a nice add-on. It's certainly something you can do on any notebook of any type, just highlight different sections of the page. I have found this very useful because I use my bullet journal, among other things, to take notes in meetings. And all of these tabs really are for meetings so that I can find stuff quickly when I need it. And that has been a lifesaver repeatedly this, this past semester in particular. So I'm keeping the practice of taking my notes into my bullet journal and of making them as easy to find as humanly possible. Oh, I should note that the little stickers at the top of the pages um, so far all come from the Planning with K bullet journal migration pack. When I get to some that are from Boho Berry, I'll mention those and everything will be linked down below because I'm big about giving credit where credit is due. Next up, we've got my vision board, which currently, if I actually attempt to hold it upright like this, looks blank because I haven't glued everything in yet. I'm still kind of playing with how I want to lay it out, whether there are other images I want to add, but what I have in this still shot is what I pretty much think it's more or less going to end up looking like. And the big focus, obviously, is the big image 
of writing. Um, that's what I want to be a big focus, but also ideas of balance, of alignment, of peace, of serenity, of connection with nature, so all, and, and just creativity in general. So that's what I'm attempting to capture with these images, and again, if I find some more, I may add them, and I may yet rearrange how they appear. Then we've got my affirmations, which this year I've labeled, uh, titled Affirmations for Alignment, and I actually revised them a little bit. They're still pretty much the affirmations that I used in 2019, but I've rewritten some of them so that their focus is more on bringing things into alignment. And the order has been changed to sort of shape that focus around bringing things into alignment. Um, most of them come from other sources that I've just run across over time. They're, I haven't really invented them necessarily, but um, I've just collected them and haven't necessarily credited them the way I would like to have done so that I could tell you where to find the sources. But at this point also, I've rewritten them a bit, so I guess they are a little more mine. Quotes and inspiration uh, is obviously blank so far. I definitely like starting frequently the month, but definitely the week with a quote. Towards the end of 2019, I've actually been using Delphic Maxims as my quotes. So this spread could end up being entirely Delphic Maxims because there are 147 of them. So even if it's every week plus every month, that's not even going to come close to exhausting them. But I may end up using other sources because I will probably end up using other sources. In any case, I like using them within the weeks, but then I also like having them all in one place so that when I go back and say, you know, I remember this particular quote that I really liked and I don't remember what the wording was or who said it. Maybe I want to use it to start a chapter because sometimes people will do that and I have been known to do that, to start a chapter with a quote from something that sort of sums things up or sets the tone. Or maybe I want to use it in a lecture because I think it would be very appropriate and fitting. I want to be able to find it. So I not only bring the quotes from their particular month, month starter page or weekly log page into this collection here, but then also going back to the index, I thread it across the journals so that if it's not in this journal, I can then go back and, and find it in previous ones. My ridiculously long TBR list. And this is having cut some things, not only what was read, but some things that really fell under the heading of I feel like I should read them. I've migrated them two or three times across bullet journals, so I think it's probably not going to happen. So I dropped them. I can always go back to an earlier journal and find them again someday if I think I want to. But I do find this a useful spread to have when I'm doing things like deciding what's my next audiobook going to be. Um, because I get a new audiobook every month from Audible, although I am trying to move away from that and use Libby instead. Um, because why keep giving Audible money if I can borrow from the library? A number of these are books that I have somewhere. They're not necessarily in very organized places. A thing I would like to do something about. But many of them are actually physically here somewhere or already in, queued up in my Kindle app in my phone. But this gives me a way to just look and also to look, do I think I want to dig up something that was recommended to me professionally or something that I just personally want to read right now? What, what do I want my next read to be? So that's why the 
columns for personal and professional are also there, although certainly several titles span both. Then the books I have read spread, which is probably very ambitious to have across two pages. But hey, let's be optimistic. <laughs> gift ideas, they're not necessarily Christmas gift ideas. In fact, one of the headings is occasion, but that's what I had to work with for stickers that had anything to do with gifts. And I do like to use stickers to kind of spice things up when I can put my hands on them. Um, Cause I just, I do like to have that visual interest without spending forever sketching and coloring. Media Rex has been useful to just capture when somebody recommends a podcast to me or recommends a particular band to me to check out or a particular show or movie. Um, doesn't mean I necessarily will have the time to get to it, but I can at least capture it. And then if I decide to check it out, um, if I'm looking for additional podcasts or whatever music to check out, then I have someplace to look for that. Future log. Future log. I'm not doing a calendex this time around. I've decided I, much as I enjoy creating it, I don't make good enough use of it. And I have known for a while that I don't make good enough use of it. It's time to let it go. I do like having some place that I can capture upcoming stuff somewhere because it's not always possible to throw it directly into my electronic calendar because Verizon hates me, apparently. And I currently cannot guarantee anywhere that I have connection. So much for can you hear me now? Let's just drop, drop that right there. Also, sometimes it's just not, I'm not in a place where I want to pull out my phone to throw something on my calendar. Also, I keep my personal appointments and my university related appointments on two separate calendars that then talk to my phone calendar. So there's my, my Google calendar, which has my personal stuff. There's my Outlook calendar, which has my university stuff. And then there's the main calendar on my phone that pulls from both of those and an additional calendar that I'm synced with. That keeps my sanity a little intact by keeping those things both separated and yet then also bringing them together in one place so I can see everything and see potential conflicts. So if I'm not at a computer to get at my Outlook calendar, then a, an upcoming university thing I need to be able to drop into here so that I can then eventually get it into the electronic calendar. The last spread is the one real writing related spread. And it's, I decided after a couple of drafts to change it from a writing progress spread to a projects progress spread, project progress spread because I might decide I want to put knitting projects in here too, or some other kind of projects, creative projects in general, probably. And maybe I'll retitle it something else down the line to capture that. But for now, it's called Project Progress, and it's just some place where I can jot down the date, what the project is, where it's at, and what my next steps are. This is one that may not get as much use as I would like, because my idea is that at the turning of each month, at a minimum, I will check in on the projects that I have going on. Where are they at? Where are they going? What do I need to do next as I'm planning the next month? Since this is in my front matter before I start any of the month or monthly logs or weekly logs, it could easily get lost. I'm hoping that won't be the case. I do think that this could be very helpful 
to just keep things moving forward. The previous tracker that I had, Projects in Progress, yeah, I didn't change the title that much, did I? But it had an assumption that I was doing things that had specific checkpoints. And that came from a time when most of my projects did have a lot of specific checkpoints. Now I'm at a place where most of my projects don't have externally dictated specific checkpoints. They're a lot more fluid. Some of them do. I, mean, I have to have my course ready by the time the semester starts, right? So there are things that do have a definite deadline, but there are other things that don't. And I want to be able to continue checking in on them without trying to force it to fit into something that doesn't actually work. If it works, great. If it doesn't, then we'll try something different. That's definitely my approach to bullet journaling is see what works, try it out. And if it works, I keep it. If it doesn't work, I don't. So that's how I've gotten to here in bullet journal number seven, having dropped a lot of things that I used to do and picked up others that are new. And we'll see how they go. Are you migrating to a new bullet journal for 2020 or a new planner? Whatever system you may use. How's that going? Are you changing things up from previous years? Are you bringing some things forward and leaving some things behind? If so, what are they? I'd be very interested to hear and would love to chat with you about it, either in comments or on Discord. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.